Here we go. Hey, it's a little bit past eight. We're a little late. I apologize up front. This is the uh, the crew from 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 the Philmont group. And uh, I'm you know what? I'm going to mispronounce what it is. Philmont Trek Talk Prep News and Info. That's the name of the group. Um, what we're going to talk about here today is itinerary selection for the 2021 uh, summer uh, Philmont Trek season. Uh, so here, I, hi, my name's Jeff. I founded the group in Facebook and I run Gear Report, which is hosting this YouTube live stream. We have uh, Sal and Scott. So uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, just give a quick introduction uh, and then we can move into what the purpose of the broadcast is and, and start. Sal, you go first. I go first. Okay. My name is Sal Porto, uh, Assistant Scoutmaster 212, Lutes, Florida, all the way down by Tampa. Uh, I'm a Philmont ambassador for the Greater Tampa Bay Area Council. I'm also the lead on our council contingents. So been to Philmont uh, five treks, six times at Philmont. So this year will be trek number six. And I started in 2013, so I'm so I'm fairly recent on most of my treks. How's that for quick enough? Very good. That's good. Yeah. And I'm Scott O'Mary. I'm the scout master at Troop 259 in Plano, Texas, just north of Dallas. I have had the great opportunity to be at three of the four national high adventure camps, been to Philmont twice. Once as a summer trekker and once as a winter adventurer. Glad to be here. I'm quite jealous that you got to go back for winter adventure, by the way. No, no thank uh, you. I yeah, I, I interviewed the um, Luke who was heading up that program at the end of 2019 uh, when I happened to be close to the ranch and stopped by and said, hey, who wants to do an interview? And I'm telling you, I had no interest on going on a winter trek until we did that interview and by the time we were done i was like sign me up brother uh but it just hadn't worked out timing wise yet uh, and i neglected my philmont background uh, i'm an assistant scoutmaster at troop 19 in burlington north carolina and the skipper of sea scout ship 4019 also in burlington i went to philmont back in 1990 there was a film on back then um and then again in 2017 i went with my with my dad and my brother and then i took my son and it's a great way to see Philmont, by the way so uh the purpose of the broadcast and just for the mechanics of how this is going to work i'm going to kind of act as the moderator i'm the least experienced here in terms of Philmont and taking crews to Philmont. so i'm going to be the moderator try to keep us on track ask the questions uh, and run the tech on the background. Sal and Scott are probably going to have the more valuable input, so they're going to answer most of that stuff. What we're going to try to do here is share some thoughts on the process for Trek selection, things we've learned along the way, that type of stuff. What we're not going to cover is anything other than Trek selection, okay? We're going to try our best. We've all got tons of great stories. We're going to try to limit those and power through helping, you know, like with the goal of maybe you're a crew advisor who has never helped a, a crew set up a trek before and you don't even know where to start with trek selection. We're going to try to help give you some tools and processes to make that a little bit more effective so you have a better outcome at the end. We're going to try to stay on track and aim at the seven, nine, and 12-day backpacking treks to provide information for that. Uh, and then when it's all done, I'll try to summarize some of this in a post, uh, in an article on Gear Report. But we're going to try to keep it on track there. Speaking of questions, Sal has taken some questions offline before this started. I'm sure we'll get to those at, at some point when it makes sense to talk about them. We also are live on YouTube. That means you can leave questions or comments in the comments understand if we if it's something on the agenda we're coming to we may just wait and talk about it later but please if you're out there i see 61 people watching right now leave a comment say hi let us know where you're from let us know when you're going whether it's this year or next year and if you have any specific questions and we'll work our way through those as we go uh all right we're hitting the five minute mark i usually stall the first five minutes to give people a chance to join 
So uh, now that we hit that five minutes, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we've already done our introductions. So what what is Philmont in terms of how to how it influences a uh, the trek selection process. My thought, I said, you know, it's a series of backcountry experiences and programs separated by miles of hiking in the New Mexico mountains. What do you guys think? How, how do you see it? That's the interactive portion, That's guys. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> You're going to have to call on us. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah, you have to call us. Well, we're just amazed that we can do stuff like this. Um, I would say the same thing. Philmont is an experience that in my world, I wish every scouter could make it because yeah. it's, they say it's life, it's life changing. It definitely is. So I try to get as many people as I can interested in going and trying to, um, you can't tell what Philmont is. They call it Philmont magic for a reason. Um, and once you've been there, you've understand the magic and that's why you want to keep going back. Cause you want more and more people to experience that magic. Right. I agree. Right. So in terms of in terms of how you want to think about selecting an itinerary, um, it, it, to me, again, it's about the activities in that country. Uh, I tend to take the approach of saying if it's something there's so many activities and we'll get into in more detail what those are. Um, if it's something you can do easily near home. Maybe you look for something at Philmont on your itinerary that's harder to do, to do at home. So, so this is going to be up to each crew to figure out how, how that experience works out. But, but to me, what is Philmont when I was 17 and went was it was mountains that we could put in some hard miles and see how, how far we could hike in a short amount of time. But then when I look back at it, what I remember are all the activities, the program at the backcountry camps maybe a few views and things, but generally it wasn't the backpacking. So when I'm trying to help a crew figure out what itinerary items to pick, those activities and backcountry program are the things that, that I suggest that they focus on more than anything. So let's dive into, I think Sal had an earthquake. Um, yeah, if, I did. If, it's, if it's stopped shaking and you want to talk about, uh, a typical day on the trail at Philmont, Sal. I think that okay. might help us wrap our head around how the itinerary is going to be impacted by that. Okay. Um, if I hit share screen, how almost I want to go to a trek page. Can you pull me up at any trek? I I will be able to in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Just pull me up trek number. Give me. It doesn't matter which number. Yeah. I'll it, just start. It, Talk about something for a minute. I got to go okay. grab that document real quick and uh, and I'll bring it up in, in just a minute. Okay. You, what I'm going to do, guys, is the, if for the ones who haven't been at Philmont first, your day one on Philmont is at base camp. So basically you're at base camp all day um, going through check-ins. Uh, you got medical recheck. You got equipment. And you got an opening ceremony. Uh, you do your shakedown with your ranger. Uh, but for things, but it's this, the, you meet your ranger, you go to logistics. Logistics basically maps out your trek. They go through and show you all your camps and everything like that. Um, while he's pulling it up, um, for the ones that haven't been there yet, you will get, in the, probably another month or so, you will get a Philmont map. Make sure you take that with you. But when you're at Philmont, you actually will, will want to buy either a North Country or a South Country map. Um, I would say at least two, one for the crew, one for at least one adult. Uh, that we have a backup to go like that. So but so we're not going to go into the gear. Yeah, just pull me up. Uh, number two, that's a good one. Okay, you ready? Okay. Itinerary two. When you're looking at this, the best way to look, first thing you see is challenging. Um Philmont has, we have challenging, rugged, strenuous, and super strenuous treks. Uh, that's usually the mileage and or how many mountains and the, the terrain that you're going to go over. Um, uh, if you look on this one, the highlights for this one is Baldy Mountain, which everybody loves, uh, North, North Pornell Canyon, Horse Canyon, 
you're going to do a Baldy Copper Park loop. And some of the activities that you're going to end up doing is a 12 gauge shotgun, the cowboy action shooting. For those who doesn't don't know, cowboy action shooting is double barrel shotgun, Winchesters and Colt 45s, um, blacksmithing and Aztec mine tour. Um, that's some of the highlights. When we get to the next page, you'll see some more of them. And everybody does a conservation project. It's a four hour conservation project. You need to do another six hours of a conservation project, either before or after to earn a 50 miler award. Uh, and you're going to be doing a new trail construction. That's usually what 99% of the conservation project is, is trail work. So get used to trail work. It's either smashing rocks and moving rocks or moving stumps or something like that. Okay. Jeff, go to the next page for I can kind of walk through day one, day two. Okay. Okay. When well, you see day one, it says camping headquarters. Um, that means you're at you're day one. You're always going to be at, you're at base camp. Day two. Okay. You're going to, this is a North country trek. Um, day two, you're going to go to Anastasia. Um, so when you leave camp, that's where you're headed to. And it's going to be ranger training. Everybody gets a ranger for the first two and a half days. Um, and what that means is that bags, dining flies, the Bermuda Triangle, how to cook film up method, um, maps and compass, all that stuff you need. Um, my recommendation is film has an excellent YouTube channels. And a lot of uh, stuff on their website shows you how to do all that stuff. Practice before you get there. That way, when you ranger gives you that stuff, you're not looking like a deer in the headlight. At least you know some of it. Um, so let's start with day two. You go to Anastasia. You do ranger training. You're going to go to the T-Rex track, track, excuse me, and it's a trail camp. Now, the difference between a trail camp, when you look at Anastasia, it's capital A with little alpha bits for a and below it is Metcalf that's all in capital um, Metcalf is a staff camp that's in all capital letters staff camp means they have staff there um, they usually have better water it's usually uh, water it's already purified you don't have to worry about that um, if you look down a little further at Poneal you can't really see it there's an S above Poneal that means they have showers so usually you have at least one shower camp on your trail trek, sometimes two if you're lucky. Um, so let's excuse me. So let's go start. The way I do my crew is again, it's a it's a boy led trek. We try to get up at five thirty. Uh, the sun is up at five thirty. So you would get up at five thirty. You would try to leave by six thirty. Philmont would love for you everybody to leave in an hour, uh, but that is just. A suggestion some crews are faster some crews are slower just take that in consideration um, if you're a adult that has a slow crew my suggestion was bring a book uh, or drink some coffee but pack your backpack and just sit back and watch and let them learn because after a while they'll figure out um, they um, want to go faster um, yeah well if you look down somebody has a comment says Day six and day seven is Ute Meadows. Yes, you have two days back to back at Ute Meadows because if you look at day seven, you climb Baldy. So you're going up Baldy on one side, coming back down, um, and you'll be going through French Henry and coming back to Ute Meadows. So that's your down day. So when you climb Baldy, most of the time Baldy is a day hike, so you do not need full packs. Um, so what you want to do when you do a Baldy day hike um whether you're here and jacket you do depending on what you're going to be doing if you're going through baldy town if you look on this one it, on the right hand side it says food pickup so you have food pickup at camping headquarters before you leave you'll have a food pickup at poneal and you'll have a food pickup at baldy town um, I, for this trek, you'll be going up over Baldy, going to French Henry on day seven, coming back to Baldy Town before you go to Ute Meadows. You will be picking up food. Um, everybody knows Philmont food comes in bags. 
it's kind of hard to carry those bags without a backpack. So what we do is we usually get three to four boys to carry empty backpacks with just your water, your basic first aid kit, and maybe some food for lunch up and over. So it's a, as, and as you can come back down to Baldy Town, he'll, you'll load up with food. So that's how you do your, your Baldy run when you go up and over with an empty backpack. Uh, again, at least let's start begin. You get up at about 5.30, try to leave at 6.30. And if you can leave by 6.30, you sh should be done with your, most of your hiking unless it's a really, really long day. I would say by noon, 1 o'clock is what your goal is. You do not want to be hiking uh, all day. You want to try to get done early for two reasons. A, if you're going to a staff camp and they had, have activities, those activities do have a shutdown time They're about between two and three. Uh, so if you get there late, you're going to miss out on activity. So the, the scouts and the adults will be bummed. A, we missed our activity. Uh, B, if it's just a trail camp and you get in at noon, you have a down day. You could rest that day and get prepared for the next day. So that's the, that's the reason why I get my crew to try to buy into getting up between 5 and 5.30 in the morning and um, getting on, on the trail in 45 minutes to an hour. Again, if your tr crew does not do that, then you're just going to have to try to talk them into it. Um, if you look at this tr trek at the bottom, you see campsite elevations. Your lowest one is 6,800 feet. Your highest one is 9,100 you have a uh, six trail camps and one layover camp. So, which is not a bad camp. Um, that's not a bad. It's a, it's a sectional map. You'll have to buy it. Philmont would be the north. Um, you get, like I said, you'll get one big Philmont map. But if you're doing the big Philmont map, does not have a lot of detail into the trails. So, you really want to get the sectional maps when you get to Philmont. Again, I would say get two. One for the crew and one for well, at least one more adult. That way you guys will have um, uh, a backup. Everything needs a backup. Not everybody needs a map on the trail. One or two is all you really need. Um, do we have any questions? I saw I saw a question about the Ute Meadows, and I think I got that one. Yes, Ute Meadows would be a layover camp. Hey, Sal, I'm there was a think. question from Fred about okay. monsoon season. And while... I would not advise anybody to pick or not pick an itinerary based on monsoon season. It is, it is a real thing in the Southwest United States in July and August. Sometimes the monsoons are dry, which means just a lot of lightning, but yes, you can expect quite a few storms in the afternoon. So it's not really going to impact your trek selection as much as how your crew lead manages your trek. Uh, Sal pointed out, uh, uh, rightly so, that your your crew wants to get moving early in the morning before those storms happen. If you've got Baldy or Tooth of Time on your itinerary, you want to make sure you're up and on the way down by noon uh, because of the monsoon season. I think you'll probably have a little bit more time in the June time frame. Yeah, June is usually the early June is less rain than July, I understand. I've always gone in June. Uh, I've gone a couple of times in first two weeks of July. And it's, in my opinion, it's really the same. Just be prepared for rain. Uh, it could rain for 10 minutes on one side of the mountain and your side of the mountain, it's not going to rain. So it's, you just have to have a good weather guy. Um, I always give that uh, duty to one of my scouts mm -hmm. and say, you're in charge of watching the clouds and let us know. And he's the one who makes the call. And mm -hmm. again, a film on a boy led a scout led trek. Um, I'll give it to a scout, but always have an adult to say, Hey, double check them and make sure. So you, you want to make sure you guys stay safe. Yeah. Okay. Do I have any more questions? I'm well, I think this is interesting. A note about uh, a kid not wanting to get up at eight o'clock and on a normal day. I, <laughs> I got to tell you, all it takes is one day hiking in the heat of the afternoon and getting dehydrated and having to carry extra water to deal with that. And they will be more than happy to get up earlier. You know, once they realize that, that getting up earlier means not having to hike in the heat, it's a whole lot easier uh, for them to self-motivate to, to get up and get yeah. moving early. And if yeah. you get up at eight, 
you're going to do nothing but hike because you're probably going to miss most of your activities or waiting behind a lot yep. of other crews. Yep. Yeah. But Correct. in terms of itinerary selection, um, uh, the question of, you know, the, the, I, I kind of took that to mean the, does, um, does the monsoon season impact what itinerary you pick? Um, it, in my mind, Maybe if 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 you think that uh, a lot of rain is going to slow you down, maybe you don't go for the extreme mileage, which are the higher number treks, right? So we looked at trek number two, which is fairly low miles, fairly low strenuous. With each increment you go up in the numbering system, they get more challenging, you know, in, in theory, more physically challenging. Maybe if I were going in monsoon season and I thought that was going to be a problem, I might dial back the strenuousness a bit. I, I don't know. Um, I can tell you the last trek I was on, when we got back to base camp, we had been rained on two days, one heavy after we'd set up camp. One day we got spritzed a few times. That was it. We heard massive storms every day and thought we were going to get pounded, but we only got hit those two times and it wasn't a big deal. We talked to other crews that came off the trails the same as us. They got soaked every single day. Same ranch, different parts of the ranch, very different experience. If we had tried to pick our trek based on what the weather was going to be, who knows? So I personally, I would say, don't even worry about it. Uh, I, I would think that early June versus late July is a bigger difference because uh, if, if you don't like the cold, maybe you don't want to be on a trek that has a lot of real high altitude stuff. If you're going in early June where there's still snow on the ground and it's still cooler. But that's about the only way I would really consider weather. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah I don't I don't consider the weather part of the, the rain is the rain where you're going to. You, it's you're gonna get, either you're going to get hit or you're not. It's really you can't. I wouldn't pick a trek on that. Uh, when you let's go back to this trek on the fr front page of this tr number two, you saw the mileage. I think it said 68 miles. Um, that mileage is from camp to camp to camp. Uh, no, it's 54 miles. I'm saying it's 54 miles. So. When you're looking at that mileage, that's camp to camp to camp. That does not take in consideration any side hikes that you might do. Or if you have to hike to like cowboy action shooting at Poneal, cowboy action shooting is, I would say, probably a half a mile to three quarters of a mile from the camp mm -hmm. of Poneal. Yeah. So what Phil always says is take that 54 miles and, takes tw and take a minimum 25% and add that to that. So I would. 15 miles roughly is what you're going to be doing on that track. So that's a, okay. I got a question about dry camps. Uh, yeah, we'll get to dry camps in a minute and I'll be running you through your question about should they be avoided or not? Uh, everybody has their opinions on that. Uh, again, I think I cover the typical day at Philmont. Again, you look at the activities again, let the boys or the scouts, um choose the activities my philosophy is what i tell my adult leaders is we are on vacation we are advisors we advise we do not tell our job is to make sure they're safe and don't do anything stupid so that's about the only thing i tell my adult leaders i tell my boys and my scouts the same thing just be safe be don't do anything really stupid or i'm gonna end up on a newspaper or on tv i don't want to <laughs> do it well that's a lot of extra paperwork sal come on yeah, I don't like paperwork. paperwork. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we had we had so, a question. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think is it Katie had a question about a dry camp. Okay, what a dry camp is me means that at when you stop at that dry camp, there will be no water source. So what that means is somewhere before you get to that water, that camp, you will stop and fill up everything you have for water. Now there's different philosophies on how to carry that water to that camp. Uh, I've seen people carry the big three or four liter jugs of water and fill them up and somebody's dragging that thing. But remember, you might be going up a mountain, you might have to carry it three or four miles. So that's a lot of weight to carry for three or four miles. What my crew, what I tell my crews is, we always bring four Nalgene's. That's a gallon of water. If we need that fourth Nalgene, we always going to use three. 
that fourth one goes in the bottom of the backpack. If we need all four, then we everybody fills up four Nalgene's at that last water. And what you do on that dry camp is you you have your only meal usually cooking is your dinner meal. That's when you need to boost to boil the water. What we do is if we have a dry camp for the evening, we eat our dinner for lunch because there's usually water at lunch and then we have a cold dinner. So Katie, you understand you switch your breakfast or lunch that day. That way you don't have to use as much water for dinner. It's just drinking water, not heating your water to boil, do your dishes and heat up all the meal because you may have water at lunch and you may not have water till your next lunch. So it could be up to 24 hours of no water. So I would not avoid a, a track that has dry, but just be in consideration that it's a little bit more extra work. You may have a little more weight to carry because you may be carrying four Nalgene's of water. Uh, Nalgene is two and a half pounds. So four Nalgene's is 10 pounds of water as opposed to seven pounds of water. Yeah. It's, and plus you're all your extra, depending on where your food picks up. So if you look on the screen, Azurite is a dry camp. So you, you got Pueblo Ruins, um, and you go into Azurite. Azurite is one of the new camps. It's North Country. I think the water source for that is at Copper Park. Um, and Azurite is probably, I would say, a mile, give or take, from Copper Park. Um, so you'll have to carry your all your water an extra mile. That's a long way back and forth, back and forth. So you want to carry as much water as you can. Um, speaking on camps, Philmont has eight new camps coming out this year. Uh, North Country, South Country is a little bit of both. They will be on the new Trek maps. Um, some of them are dry, some of them are not. Um, some of the new things that Philmont's doing, if most of the time you get bussed out to your first place that you start, there are going to be two camps that you're actually going to hike out from base camp and you're going to hike from base camp to your first camp. Uh, both of those will be in South Country, by the way, nothing in the North Country. So if you um, want to know that, I think we're going to post those. on. Uh, I've got the UTM coordinates for that. Um, we'll post those on the Facebook page tomorrow sometime. I'll give, them, I'll give them to Jeff and he can post them for everybody to look at. Yeah, so, so you gave a great tip earlier that the little S, like you saw on Ponyo meant that that camp has a shower. The little D, the little superscript D after, um, what is it, I, Azurite indicates Azurite, yes. that, uh, that it's dry. Yeah, correct. Okay, so, and Miles. Looking, <clears throat> what, and and in more... case anyone's wondering, uh, the, the document we have pulled up here is straight off the Philmont website. It's the 2021 itinerary guidebook that was just released, what, a week, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, something like yeah, that? We, something like it, yeah. Well, yeah one more uh, thought about um, dry camps is even a wet camp could be a dry camp once you get there. Sure. Um, so on day one, your crew lead will go into the planning office and they're on a big board, there'll be water reports from all the camps. It's very important that you check that out or your crew lead checks that out to make sure that a wet camp suddenly didn't become dry because the stream dried up that day or something like that. So be prepared. Yep, that's true. Okay. Um, da, da, da. Miles so, has uh, a question about, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, the, the question, I saw it was answered in the comments, but Joseph asked if you pick the activities, the, the itinerary, basically, before you get to Philmont or on arrival. So uh, we're going to talk about the mechanics of how the selection process works here shortly. So we're going to come back to that. Uh, but I will say, it you know, months before you get to Philmont, so you have time to plan for that yeah. activity. We'll get into how that works here shortly. Correct. And uh, Miles had wanted to know about the water uh, with all the camps have water, is there water pumps? No, there's not water pumps. So, uh, it, trail camps usually have water from a stream um, or a lake or something like that. They, some of them do have pan, uh, pumps. You know, every camp is going to be different. Um, again, Philmont will give you purifying tablets for the water. That will, They'll tell you if you have to purify it or not. Uh, most of your staff camps... Um, have water that is already purified for you. They just have a spigot and 
they do the purification. So my advice is if you start out in the morning at a, <clears throat> at a trail camp and you're going to be passing through and you'll have, let's say, one Nalgene, you say, oh, I get, get more water, but I'll be passing through a staff camp in an hour or two and you can hold off hold off to go to a trail camp, a staff camp and fill up as much water as you want to, because it's already purified. You don't have to worry about it. Little things you have to, uh, you learn along the way. <laughs> staff camps has usually got good water compared to other water. So, uh, let's see. Okay. So why don't we, why don't we move to the next item on the agenda, okay. which we already kind of touched on is, um, uh, well, the next item was what is a trek itinerary and why it matters. And so Sal has given us a tour of the printed itinerary. It's the two pages. We missed one thing on it. And I, and I do want to address that because it really does matter. Uh, oh, and I just scrolled too far. Let me get back to one. All right. Bear with me, folks. My mouse died right as we were starting. And I'm having to do this on the laptop. So here we go. Uh, so this is our page one of the itinerary. So in this case, it's uh, 12 one. So it's the uh, least strenuous, least challenging, you know, however, however you want to look at that. Um, the lowest number is, is like the, the, it's still, it's still 51 miles folks. <laughs> you know, don't, don't think this is a walk in the park. It, it's a walk in a very big park and it's a very long park with some up and down. And that's what I wanted to talk about is we have a graph at the bottom of the first page that shows your um, elevation gain and the distance you hike. And um, what I would uh, one of the things that I think is very important, especially for the adults, for the crew advisors, some youth could be impacted by this as well. But my experience is typically us old people who have altitude acclimation uh, issues and may have to deal with altitude sickness symptoms. So I would strongly encourage you. Um, I agree with what Sal said about this is a scout led trek. The one that the one area that I will be a little bit more bold in suggesting things is when it comes to potential medical issues. Like if I know we've got old people like me who have had altitude sickness issues on the trail at Philmont before, I'm going to ask the crew to not consider putting treks on the list that have a lot of altitude gain in the first couple of days. I want to push that out so that altitude gain happens later. So, so to give me a little bit more time to acclimate, because it's not going to help anyone if I end up stopping the whole crew on the trail. Yeah, and usually at Philmont, what they try to do is the first two to three days, once you hit the trail, <clears throat> they, they don't pile, p put a lot of mileage. If you look at the next page, it shows you how many miles you do. You mainly do two to three, maybe four miles the first two or three days on the trail. So you're not doing a lot of mileage. They, they kind of put that in there for a reason. Uh, that way, everybody gets used to Philmont. It depends where you're coming from. Uh, as of myself, I'm, I'm from Florida, so we are my elevation in my house is, if I'm lucky, 50. Um, so anytime I get, get get above 50 feet, I'm I'm going high. So uh, we just uh, have to uh, watch out for that. Like I said, the first three or four days, you're doing three to four miles at a time. So it's not a lot of miles. It's just more to get you used to that. The altitude and stuff. Yeah, so so Jerry had a good point here. The blue bars at the bottom of page one of each uh, of the two-page itinerary description, the blue bar indicates the distance that will be hiked that day. The red is kind of a profile of the altitude. So literally, as it goes up, you're going uphill. Um, so in this example, you've got uh, a little bit of altitude gain early on. And then uh, from day five camp where it looks like they're around, uh, it's at the two mark on the left side. It goes up pretty dramatically. That's a high altitude gain day. I personally would not be happy with a trek that had that on day two or day three. I would want something. Personally, my experience day four or beyond, I'm going to be acclimated. And, and I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm the worst case scenario. But uh, definitely the profile on this looks pretty good for altitude gain. Um, but some of them are a little bit more aggressive early. 
those are the ones I would be a little concerned about. And, and if I can say something here, uh, uh, one, one of the Eagle Scouts out there, uh, uh, Gun Websites, G-Webs, we call him, um, mentioned giving a thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. I, I want to interrupt the flow of what we're doing to say thanks to Sal. This was an awesome idea that you brought to us to do this and Scott for jumping on board and, uh, and, you know, really getting this, uh, project to do this going, um, so that we could bring this to you and, and, and hopefully be some help to people. Uh, also in the comments, you are welcome to leave any suggestions for other stuff that you'd like us to talk about, or if you have other people you'd like us to have on, to talk about different things that you think are going to help with Trek prep and, and to help people have a better experience at Philmont. That's our goal. Yeah. yeah Philmont is, if, if you're a, a dog going, Philmont does have monthly YouTube or Facebook uh, meetings. We will call them live events. Um, <clears throat> I think the last one they did last month was on gear. So, um, I don't think that I don't can't remember what the next one is going to be on. I would suggest if you haven't been on one, go ahead and jump on it next month and uh, listen to them. Uh, and they're very informative. The reason why, like I said, the reason why I did this, I don't think they're going to go into Trek detail as much as I would like them to do. To do. FEMA does an awesome job, but I, the Trek selection process is some kind can be overwhelming to new people. So um, it all depends on what you say. Okay. Um, hey. Can, yes, sir. can I offer a contrary opinion on the altitude uh, conversation? I, I sure, understand. Girl. I understand if you're have a tendency to getting a sick to altitude, but with enough money, enough time, enough vacation, there are ways to mitigate that. So if your crew is at zero sea level and you have a few extra days to spend ahead of time at Philmont, by all means. I think you guys can acclimate and, and be set for the altitude. Oh, yes. Yes, I understand. But unfortunately, when you're coming from Florida, uh, probably out anywhere from the East Coast, our biggest expense is air, air, air train. The only way to get there is by air. There's no other way to do it. So we're already pushing, for my council, we're putting, pushing two grand per person. So to add some more tack on, to me, it's a lot of money for parents for an extra day or two. And then people have to get the day off for work and all that good stuff. So, But that's a whole different conversation. Um, Bennett Smith had a question about a seven-day trek. Is it possible for the boys to earn a 50-miler? Um, it all depends on the trek. I don't remember off the top of my head if the – Seven dayers have fifty milers or not? You'd have to well, look. Um, well, Sal, do you have you have it right there in front of you? Can you go to the seven? One? Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at one right now. Seven one. That's forty three. Yeah, I would say they would be really close. Um, because I'm looking at seven thirteen. It says forty four miles. So probably. <sighs> I would say yes. I say most of your, your seven dayers would qualify for a 50 mile because with your extra walking that you're going to do for, around base camp and your side hikes, you'll probably get over 50 miles. So I would say yes on that. And Ryan, is it possible to hike to tooth the day before or after your trek? Um, I would say they, they did talk about it last year year or not last year the year before when the, we couldn't go when they didn't have any north south treks if you come back early on your last your your final day you can hike up to the tooth or that morning depending on how you're leaving film out they said you could actually hike up to tooth a time and hike back down if you're a glutton for punishment <laughs> um but that's my opinion but I don't know if they're going to allow that this year, <clears throat> but they were letting us do that in 20, in 2019. You could hike up to tooth after your dealer hike, hike up it. I, it's about a, I would say 14 mile round trip, give or take all the way up to the tooth and back. So yeah, it's a long day. Yeah. And, it's a long and, day. Uh, getting up tooth Ridge isn't, uh, it isn't the hardest hike on the ranch, but it's certainly not a, a, an easy one either. 
No, it's not. And then also coming the, the, the trail going up from base camp and the same trail you're coming down. Um, it has a name and that's a, so, um, somebody had a question. I saw a question. Uh, Miles said a, a good thing to pack would be a life straw for places where you don't have access to purified water. Also, if it doesn't take long or have case from the purified tablets, um, Life straws are fine for a single use, for a single person, in my opinion. But if you have to fill up Nalgene's, that's a lot. You're not going to be able to use a life straw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the tablets to me, the film on tablets are the way to go. Yeah, that sometimes they don't taste the best, but you can always use one that Gator again is what they give you. So mask that chlorine taste with Gatorade. That's my opinion on the life straws. I, I'm not a big fan of them because it's, it's good for one person drinking water. And then that, if nobody else has one, then we're just standing there for one person to drink water. Uh, William said there is a, there is a okay, Josh says, in, in, in your opinions, are some activities better than others? Some should be avoided. That would be up to the scouts. Um, to me, I have never had a bad experience at any activity um i always compliment what i've always learned at philmont is always be nice to the staff when you get when you're there always the staff will bend over backwards to help you if they can um so be nice to them and they'll they'll help you out as best they can um, all the activities are great you'll hear 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 people say um don't take a burrow trek uh what a burrow trek is in for two or three days, you get a burrow. Um, I uh, had burrows, three different treks. I love burrows. So, but everybody has their own opinion on that. So, there was, to so, me, there's no activity that's so bad. I'll, I'll um, chime in on that. I have a different, I, I have a, a dissenting view here, Sal. <laughs> okay. Um, the gold I'm mine. A, the gold okay, mine? so here's the deal. <laughs> Going into okay. mines? freaks me out okay i have oh my goodness the hair just stood, stood up on my arms just thinking about it i do not like it i'll still do it because it's one of those experiences that you never forget and i'll tell you what of all the things i forgot from the 1990 trek when i was back in one of those mines in 2017 it all rushed right back to me it was the exact same feeling i hated it but it was you know a very strong memory and that's what this trek is about is making memories so i i still want them to be positive memories so with that in mind i am going to say that from the crew advisor perspective everything on the activity list has a, a different amount of risk to it. All of them, you know, are, are safe, so to speak. But there are a few that I personally think, you know what, do I really want to be out in the middle of the back country and take these exuberant young people who don't always follow directions on a mountain biking or an ATV trip where, I think it is a much higher likelihood someone's going to get injured and it's going to cause us logistic problems for the rest of the trip. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know that I would say, no, we can't do that, but I would certainly say, you know what, we can do ATVs here close to home. Let's do that. If anyone gets hurt, they just go home and it doesn't wreck the rest of the trek for the, for the crew. You know, that's true. And, My, and no one's going to pressure you to do an activity that yeah, you're not yeah, film on, doing. Right. Philmont Philmont's motto with any activity for any scout, it's challenge by choice. So mm -hmm. if a boy, for example, is afraid of heights, they will not say, Hey, you gotta go climb a pole uh, pole, it's the spar poles at the logging camp. They're not gonna make the boy do that. But if the boy does not want to, or even the adult does not want to do rock climbing and rappelling, they're not gonna force him. It's challenge by choice. Um a little side note, my son is afraid of heights. So when we did pole sparring, he was the last one there. And he looked at it, he goes, I'm not doing it. And they go, I'm not doing it. And all the boys got to him say, hey, well, all the other scouts in the crew stood around with him and say, and they kind of, they didn't, they told him to be there with him. If he didn't want to do it, we don't have to, but we'll stand here and catch you. Well, my son was four 240 football player. He goes, nobody's going to catch me, but he did it anyways. 
So to me, it's learning experience for the boys. So the activities to me is there is no bad ones. And, and the mountain biking is not bad, by the way. I like the mountain biking in Philmont. Well, well, to wrap up this question, <clears throat> I would just, in, in, uh, Jeff said it earlier, I would encourage you to review all the activities that are available because there's some activities your scouts probably never even heard of that might be of interest. Our, our guys were really interested in the railroading uh, activity that we didn't even know that was an option until we read through the, the guide. So take a peruse. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, Terry said page 20. Um, I think he must be looking at, at a prior years. It looks to me like the 2021 itinerary guidebook that those activities start on page 23, the programs included in 12 day itinerary. So I, I think all three of us tend to do 12 day treks. So, uh, so I apologize in advance if anyone's going on a nine or a seven and looking for information specific to that, it's generally the same, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it'll blow you away when you realize some of the different activities that are out there that maybe you didn't know existed. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some activities or, I mean, personally, there's some activities I think I've done a, most of them. There's some I haven't done, but again, there are no activities that I haven't enjoyed. And usually I tell the adults, the scouts go first and adults get to play. The, the good thing about <clears throat> Um, I have saw a question about um, the pace. While, while you're looking that up, can I add just one thing? Yes, sir. If, like, Go ahead. If your crew is really dead set, I want to climb Mount Baldy. That's and you're all focused on that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. We touched base on it earlier with monsoons. There could be numerous reasons when you get there that that activity is not going to be available to your crew. And it can be devastating if you built up and built up and built up to your crew to do this one activity. So I would encourage you to, you know, give all the activities some equal weight and equal billing and, and set that expectation beforehand that, you know, none of these activities are guaranteed. Okay. Jim O'Shea had a question about, um, any comments about baldy tooth treks and the risk of hiking through the burn? Okay, what they're going to do, what I understand how how um, Philmont is doing the hikes, this is the first year where they're letting people hike through the burn. Uh, there's no camping through the burn. Um, it's just hiking through. You're going to go north to south or south to north. Um, you're going to go from the north camp. Uh, the burn is what they call Simracita. Um, it's one of the newer camps. Uh, the activity there is um, laser shooting and hunting safety. Um, and how it's going to be is um, Philmont will have a staff go with you, leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, and they're going to basically do a go and no-go. If it looks like it's going to rain out and the trails could be dangerous, that's have to wait to the next day. It's listed in the trail book. I don't remember what page is on. I see Jeff yeah. trying to find it on there. Clearly, I don't remember what page it's on either. <laughs> I, I know I've uh, seen it in here. I'm trying to find yeah, it now. It's in there. So so what it's basically, I think whatever track and number it is, you have um, the regular track, alternative A, alternative B, alternative C. So if you can't make it the first day, you go on the second day. If you can't make it the second day, the third day, if you're doing a north hike, they'll reroute you a whole different way. So look in that um, trail book, trek book. I want to say, I don't remember off the top of my head either, Jeff, what page it's on. I don't have my trek book handy. Uh, but it is listed in there. the first time, yeah. Okay, Miles asked, what is the laser shooting activity? Um, it's something new at Philmont. Um, what I understand, it's going to be something like the Summit has. Summit has 12 rooms that is a... Um, laser shooting, it's like it's either skeet shooting or duck hunting or something like that. Uh, but instead of using live bullets like you would outside, it's inside, it's and you're shooting inside a room. Um, it's like the stuff, like the things like the um, uh, police force and the armed forces and people like that use for practice when they do um, 
shooting sports and stuff. So it's something new that um, Philmont um, has this year. Um, it's it's a new event. I have never done it at Philmont. I've done it at Summit. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, page 11, I think, Jeff. Page 11. Um, All right. Yeah. And I appreciate er the earlier tip about I was looking on page 23 of the PDF, but it was the numbered page three. So okay. you all, you all there have you go, me right there. The, you have me there on the is, same right there. page now. Good. Uh, go down a little bit more. Uh, that's a nine-day trek. Keep on going down. That's a nine-day trek. Let's go to the 12-day trek. Okay, there you go, 12-day trek. Okay, if you look at this one, if you're doing a north-south trek, uh, plan A is regular. Uh, plan B, if you notice, you have Simracito on day seven, Simracita on day eight, and then you're in the sawmill like you're supposed to. Um, that means you stay at your, if you look at the original 1217, you only really do one day at Simracito, not two. Um, pretty sure, let me double check, hold on. Uh, was that 17? Let me look real quick, on a second, guys. Jeff, you but, stay where you're at. Oh, okay, but... Um... I, I don't take direction very well, Sal. Bear with me. Um, uh, so, okay. But there are only two on the 12 day itineraries. There are only two that do one, one north to south, one south to north. My understanding is each day they will allow, nope, that's three, four crews, two of which will be on shorter uh, treks, two will be on a 12 day trek. All right. So, it, so if you consider most are doing 12 day treks, only two crews per day get to do that transit. That that's how I understood it. So correct. This, this is what I've always done where you start, start in the South and go up to the North. I absolutely love it. It's kind of freaking me out that it's very unlikely that our crew will have that opportunity this year because only two crews per day are going to get to do it. So just it's be prepared be, for that. Yeah, it's it's going to be very popular. Okay. On trek number 17, originally, um, you go from Simaracita to Whistle Pump to Red Hills. If you notice on here, plan B, you have two days of Simaracita. That means day one, you couldn't go. So you're stuck at Simaracita again. Then you go to the Sawmill. So you, if you do this trek and you get a layover day, one day in Simaracita, you're, you're, you're going to be going to different locations on day 9, 10, and 11 than you originally thought you were. So mm -hmm. take that in consideration when your scouts look at possibly want to pick trek number 17 as their first choice. If something happens, because let's say it's raining out and they think the trails are going to be bad going through the burn, they're going to make you sit at Simaracito another day. And whatever you're, if you were supposed to do well, well, but look at look at seventeen. Seventeen starts in the north, and then it transits to south. Correct. But then, if you don't get that, look at Plan C and D. Those end in Poneal. That's north. You never make right. it to the south country. You, you, you never make it. To, if you get diverted, you don't get to make that transit. Correct. And then you'll mess if you if you're doing if you, let's say seventeen and you were planning to do Baldy and a Tooth, and for some reason you ended up in Plan D. You're not doing the tooth. Simple as that. So, um, be on, be, like I said, watch out for that and tell you. That, I mean, that's a scenario that could happen to your scouts. Yeah. So, uh, plan B, you would get, if you did plan B on this one, you would, you would get to the tooth. But plan C and plan D, you don't get to the tooth. You're staying in the north country. Yep. So... Plan C and D are good, but if your crew actually really, really wanted to do Pony, I mean, Aldi and the Tooth in the same track, and you end up in Plan C or Plan D, you're not going to be able to do Bald uh, Tooth at a time. So then they, yeah. they will have a, not might not have a good track. So, so I want to speak to this uh, comment that came in, Plan C and D are still good tracks without the Tooth. I think any trek in here, when we talk about itinerary selection, something that, that I think is important is that there's not a bad trek on the list. You, you could rank everything in, in, you know, from 30 to, 
to one, whatever, it, rank them all in order. If you got your, your least desirable trek, you're still going to have a good time. That's just how it is out there. So even if you get diverted and you don't make it somewhere, it's still going to be good. But what we're talking about is itinerary selection. And, and to me, this is a bit of that risk mitigation of when you're waiting and we're, we're going to talk about, you know, how you may carry this out. And we probably need to get to that because we're, we're pushing an hour here and we haven't got to the mechanics of how a crew would, would actually do this. Um, so I think for now, I'm going to ask that, that on questions, um, you can post them if you like, just understand we may not get to them right away because we need to move into mechanics uh, of, of how to actually collect all of the opinions from the scouts, right? Because we're, we're, this is a scout trip, not a adult trip. And, um, and weigh out the different options when you're weighing them. If making it to Baldy and then down to the tooth in one trek is absolutely critical. Just understand this ain't the year for that to be a critical decision factor because it may or may not happen, even if you get the trek that says it's going to happen. So, so I think in terms of itinerary selection, keep that in mind, share that idea with the scouts so that no one's hopes and dreams are crushed. If, if the staff shows up at, to, to hike through the, the burn scar at 7 a.m. and says, sorry, folks, it ain't happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Correct. All right. So why don't we, and, and, and it's a phenomenal discussion. I appreciate all the questions. Uh, I'm a, I really want to be sure that we cover all the things that we had on the list. Let's do like a, a three minute summary of what are sister crews and what are the implications on trek selection. And then let's move into the mechanics of how to crews pick their top itineraries to request. Okay. You want me to talk about sister crews? Uh, well, Scott, you've been a little quiet, so why don't you yeah. take this one? <laughs> okay. I will I do that. It. So in, in I'll context, be right back. <laughs> okay. In the, in the context of Philmont, a sister crew is another crew of scouts that share the same exact itinerary that you do. It's not necessarily the two or three or four or five other crews that come with you on the airplane to Philmont and check you in the same day. You have to be on the same route. Now, Philmont, when you do your itinerary selection, allows you to designate a sister crew if you so choose to do so, and they have to reciprocate and choose you back. The challenge with that, well, let me, before I get to the challenge, you will have a sister crew, whether it be your choosing or not. What you really need to talk about with your crew is how much do we expect to do with our sister crew yep. versus act independently. And I would encourage you to act independently. You're going to make have a much better experience and you're going to be able to move a lot faster than trying to wait for your sister crew to finish up their required their activity when you're already done. Um, the other challenge, if you choose to designate a sister crew at the time you select your itineraries, you're going to be put at a little disadvantage in that you're probably not, not necessarily, but you're probably not going to get your first, maybe your second choice of itineraries. You probably would get your third or fourth. So that's something else to consider as well. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Back to you. Yeah. So let's, let's move on to the mechanics of how to manage the selection process within a crew. So if I can kind of set the scene of, um, you know, you, you guys have been to film on a lot. You've taken a variety of crews. You kind of have a process for how you sort out, uh, when the day comes, you know, when they open the portal on, on January 14th and you can start inputting your, um, request for what treks you would like, how do you get to the point of deciding what those are? So if someone's brand new at this, it's the first time taking a crew, or maybe they did it before and it didn't work out and they need a process. Help them understand maybe things you've learned that are positive, maybe things you've learned to avoid that, you know, hey, don't do it this way. I did it this way and it didn't work out. Okay, let's, I'll start off. The first one way to do it is you take that, you take the activity list that in, in the trail, in the trek book, and you give that cage all to every scout. And you have them 
basically number every activity one to one through ten. Ten, I really want to do it. One, I don't really want to do it. Um, the first year I did it, I collected all those, and I basically went through and highlighted anything. Let's say it was um, rock climbing repelling. We had seven boys that wanted to do rock climbing repelling. I highlighted that with another cut with a color. And I kind of looked at it that way. Okay, I have all these activities that most of the boys want to do. So and then I looked at the treks and said, okay, what trek has all these kind of activities? You're not going to be able to do every tr activity that everybody does. So you're going to have to take talk to those scouts and say, hey, one, only one person wants to do astronomy. Nobody else wants to do it. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do it, but you're going to get something else that you wanted to do. You're not going to be able to do everything that you want to do. Again, it depends on if you're doing South Treks or North Treks. Uh, North Trek, you want to do an ATV and everybody wants to do ATVs, you're going to have to do a South Trek. Um, stuff like that. You have to take in. So there are now some really good websites. Jeff, are we going to, you going to share that one, SIDS, later on? Uh, yeah, we can do that. And, okay. and I'm actually looking. Philmont has released some sort of uh, uh, tool yeah. as well, and can I actually you, haven't had a chance to look at that yet. I'm trying to find it so I can I've share got that. As well. Can I, can I share that. my screen? Can I share my yes, screen? Sir. Let me see if I can do it. It says share screen. Mm -hmm. uh, share screen. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, you you pick, there you pick go. The, there you go. the tab or window that you want, and it'll pop okay. up for me, and I will okay, approve that, it. That, that window right there. Can you see what I got there? That's the that's the film on Gateway no, Camping you have Gateway. To, you have to pick it in the in the broadcast tool. Okay. You have to go to it. share okay. screen and then pick the tab that you want to share. Okay. Try it now. Okay. That looks like. All right. It looks like you're sharing our the. There. You, you've got it right, but it's not the correct window. Okay, now I think maybe you got the right window. There okay. it is. Good. Okay. Excellent. For for all the Philmont lead advisors, this is your Philmont gateway. You should already have access to it. Um, can I scroll down? Okay, I can scroll down. If you look at it, I'm going to go through it real quickly if everybody knows it. Um, you'll see all the adults, all the information about them. Scroll down further. You see all the scouts. Yeah, you'll see name and all that's address. This is where you put in your crew leader and your different stuff like that. That's where you say who's got wellness first aid, who's got CPR. You can actually upload your medicals to all this stuff, but we're not going to go into that. We're going to go up a little further. And all the way at the top, you see an internet. You have itinerary explorer. If you click on that oh, blue button, okay. you click on that blue button. And it, you go into, you can look and you you see difficulty. Do I want a challenge, rugged, strenuous, or strenuous? Okay, I'm gonna say I'm strenuous. Ask you definitely want strenuous. Do not want. So I definitely want a strenuous hike. Boom. Um, and it says challenging. I don't want challenging. Puts it over there. Rugged. I'll take a rugged. And I don't want to do a super strenuous. Okay, then the next one down, it tells you what peaks you want. I'm just going to do a quick one. I definitely want Baldy. You scroll down activity, and it gives you activities. This is where you've got a ton of stuff to look. If you look at it, that's every activity they give you. So I'm just, since I know the North Country, I'm going to pick stuff that I know it's in the North Country. Um, Adats are in the North Country, so I definitely want to do those. Um, I like burrows. I definitely want burrows. Um, let's see, I definitely like cowboy action shooting, so I want to do that. So as you scroll down, you can say, yes, I want it, or no, I want it, and it will put on each side of that um, list there. And as you go down, and then you go camps, then it, you can say, what camps do you want to go to? So if you have a certain camp you want to go to, um, let's see, I'm going to say I want to go to... Uh, where is, I'm going to choose my favorite since I'm choosing. I want to go, I definitely want to go to Medcalf. 
And I definitely, I definitely want to go to Dan Beard. And I definitely want to go to, how about Iris Park? Okay. Keep on screen. Those are all your camps. And then you got miscellaneous stuff you can look to, too. Hike out of base camp or hike into base camp. I uh, personally, I don't want to hike out. And I, there's no way I can hike back in because I know I'm picking a North Country. If you look, possible itineraries, 12 and 15, that's the only two that list those activities I listed. So if I want it, but you can put anything you want on, I want to do it. And it's going to narrow it down. It will do it. It will tell you what treks have those camps. Have. And if you click on, let's say, 24, let's say I'm going to click on 12-24, it brings up slowly, but it will bring up Trek 24 for you to look at. There's, and there it is. There's Trek 24. So the Philmont, um, oops, there it is. Oh, there it is. Way to go. Lost it. Uh, I think, oh, there it is. So Trek, Trek 24, when you pull it up, it has the activities I wanted, and then it also has the camps I wanted to go to. So this is a really cool tool that Philmont did this year to help everybody to do it, to, to, to pick um, their treks. All you have to do is find out from the scouts what activities they want to do, label them one to, five, one to ten, one to five, and so you just have to do a little sortation. Sure. Um, I, I would do it, if, do it this year that way because it works really good. I'm going to use it. Um, I kind of... We got we got canceled last year, and I'm keeping my same crew. So in my world, they're keeping the same trek they wanted last year. <laughs> so hopefully that was quick. Okay, so let's get so, rid of that window. So can uh, I add a little that, color to uh, Sal's? Yep, for everybody. So uh, our crews followed similar process to Sal's, uh, just a, a couple of things. And I'm sure Sal may have done this too. We had multiple crews attending. So before we got into the selection process, we made sure that the members were set in each crew and each crew had their own crew lead already uh, established. Um, also, when they were going through and ranking all the activities, um, sometimes if they do that as a group, they, there's a group think or there's a, a, you know, someone with the loudest voice kind of pushes something through. So we made sure as the adult advisors that we created a, a, a Google form for each individual on their own to fill out and rank their own activities. So we didn't get that group think. And then we could uh, ascertain which were the, the main itineraries that kind of fit that bill. But otherwise, we follow this generally the same path as sales do. Yeah. Now, um, uh, that, that, that was a question. Ryan says, is the itinerary explorer only available for the lead advisor? Yes. The lead advisor is the only one to do that. Um, okay. He could share the, inf the logins with everybody if he wanted to. Um, I don't know why he can't. Um, but the lead advisor is the only person that has access. He is the one who puts in all the roster information. Also, Is oh, and he froze. like that. Some of that. Okay, so since personal. it looks like Sal, Sal's having a little connectivity issue, I'm going to uh -oh. talk speak to Chris's question real quick here. Uh, does it make a difference if you get your list in on the 14th or February 1st, whatever the day is that the window closes? Any time between January 14th and the window closing is the same. The only thing that matters is when they flip the switch for that computer program to run through and assign treks, that your information is in there. There is no advantage or disadvantage to getting it in early unless you consider like, you know, what if we wait and then have a tech issue and can't get it in in time? That's probably the only disadvantage I, I would think to to waiting. Well, if you if you don't get in there till February 1st and you find out you don't have some information you need, you might be scrambling. So you might want to get there a little, at least take poke around a little bit. Yeah, yep. I would I would say try to get in as, for, as fast as you can, because let's you, can you hear me now, by the way? Yes. OK, if you put it in early, let's say you put it in next the first day it opens 
and then you talk to your crew and for some reason your crew decided hey we don't like that one you could always go back and change it you have up to that final day to hit submit you can always go back and change it so you could change your number as long as it's not the day of the selection and how the selection works 9 a.m i think it's mountain time it closes and usually within the hour the lead advisor will get an email and say congratulations you have been awarded this trek so it's a pretty quick process on getting your trek selection number okay good so um th thanks for the great questions and uh, for the peek behind the curtain as someone who's never been a lead advisor i'd never seen the that gateway before so thank you sal for for giving yeah. us uh, a little peek there yeah. Another tool, so, so we saw Philmont has rolled out an itinerary selection tool to help you along the process. You see there's also uh, an individual who has created one. And uh, we actually uh, talked to him, said, hey, we got this discussion coming up. Are you going to uh, have this ready? And Sid Covington went in and updated all of his sheets from uh, that were set up with the information for the um, 2020 season. He had most of it done, was waiting on a couple things to roll it out. I, I think he may have rushed a little to get it to make sure it was all done so it would be available for us to talk about here. So there, this is another option that you have for a tool that has been very thoroughly and lovingly created and put out there to benefit anyone who is is looking for a way to organize the chaos that is, you know, uh, waiting and, um, you know, capturing and waiting and organizing the thoughts and feelings and opinions of all of the people on the crew. So uh, th thanks to, to Sid for all the time and effort putting this out there and to Philmont for providing a tool for us as well. Okay, so let me move off of that window for now. I actually um, haven't had a chance to go through that tool yet either. So um, it, it, it works really good. I've used it in the past. The only caveat I could see about that one, it calls for a full crew unless he's changed it. If you only have a crew of seven boys, it's, you have to put in blank names for the rest of the to get to the maximum number of boys. So that was the only thing I didn't like. And if you don't have, let's say you're doing eight boys and four adults, you have to put eight boys and four adults in there. You have to put the whole 12 people in there. You can't just say eight, eight scouts. Mm -hmm. so that was the only so, thing, okay. unless, he's, so, 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 unless he's changing. So it's it was taking in the consideration of the adult advisors into the crew selection? If, if, if I remember right, and I just put those all down as, as um, zeros. I didn't put anything in for them. So if you, if you didn't put anything in there, it didn't take it in consideration. But you have to fill in the slots, the names of somebody in there. Um, real quick, another – I'm going to try to share my screen again. Um, let's try this again. Another trek, another possibility – um, he hasn't updated it yet for 2021. Um, uh, let me see if I can do this again. I'm going to try it again, Jeff. Share screen, share screen. I have faith in uh, you, Sal. It's oh, going to yeah, happen. So it's going to happen. Share screen. And I want to do this one. Can you see that, Phil Trek? Share. No, okay. I heard the little bing that usually tells me I, I have a, a screen to look at to bring up, but I, uh, but I don't see it available yet. Okay, entire screen. Chrome tab. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, that one, I think. Okay, share. Ah, there How's it is. That? Okay, this is another good website. It's called filtrap.com. Um, this is pretty cool. Also, it lets you look at, again, this is an odd film on site. So, but it's a gentleman doing it. This lets you look at the treks. Um, and I'm just going to go through one. It, you can look at it. You can highlight the camps you want to go to. It has a camp filter programs, itineraries. Um, the cool thing about this one, I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to pick trek number three. When you click on the blue, 
it brings it up just like in the book. Okay. But if you scroll down to the bottom, it's got oh. a interact it's got an interactive map. You can you can up them you can look like you said you can go to the map, look bigger and smaller at it, which is pretty cool. It's it's a very it's a very good website to go to to look at some of the trek op choices. It, so it's another one to look at another tool to help you guys um, look at the different because you, you can see that if you increase it, you can actually see on the map exactly how your trails are. Now, these are just um, suggested trails. Some places you do have more than one way to get to somewhere so you know that's a just, really good point that we haven't talked about yet that that the itineraries literally give you places where you're supposed to be each day and and the Philmont staff knows who's coming and they expect you so you really need to show up where you're supposed to but they don't tell you you have to go this way to get there right i think on our one of our questions we're supposed to get to is hiking off Philmont property so we gotta get to that real quick too Okay. Um, so, another, uh, and that's a, a good uh, segue. Real quick on this one, what I like about this, we, another thing we haven't talked about is um, the camps that you're going to be staying at. So I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to wear a camp filter. Um, I'm going to go to a trail camp. All the trail camps, there they all are, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to pick a trail camp. I'm going to pick uh, Copper Park. You look at Copper Park, it shows a picture going into Copper Park, which is pretty cool. It shows it where it is on the, on the map. But if you look above the map, it says there are three campsites available here. You click on that little picture, it throws you up the, camp, the, the, the map of the camp you'll be staying at. So you can increase that a little bit. So that kind of gives you the camps set up when you get there to that camp. So you can see where the water source is for this camp, which is this little stream here. You can see all the campsites. You can see where the, everybody knows where the red roof is and everybody knows where the bear bag which should be. So it gives you everything there. So this is a cool little thing to look at the camps. So when you're going, you can see where the water sources are if it's not a dry camp. Mm -hmm. Hope I went, didn't go through that too fast. Yeah, that was great. I wasn't aware that that uh, website existed. So uh, thank yeah, you for I sharing kind of, that. I, I kind of forgot about it this afternoon. <laughs> but yeah, so for anyone who looks that up, like the, this image that's on the screen that uh, of Copper Park, that looks like the type of map that you see uh, as you're hiking into a camp at Philmont along the trail, just nailed up or stuck up to a tree on the way in. Uh, from any trail going into that camp, you'll see a laminated map that looks about like that. So, it so is, it is, your it is. With that, show it to your that, crew, help your crew leader understand how to read that. They'll be better able to uh, to figure that out when they get yeah. out there on the trail. Because, so, because, go ahead. Uh, well, I, I'm kind of going on to some of the questions that we're getting that are somewhat related to this, and I don't know okay. if you guys have an opinion. Um, Questions are related to not necessarily picking activities for itinerary, but maybe picking the camp itself. Maybe you want to go see, maybe a, a camp is particularly beautiful or for something like that that you want to put on your list. Do you have a, opinions on that? Um, well, or it could be that maybe that there are just some iconic camps. You know, who yeah. who who goes in the North Country and then go to Poneal? You know, like yeah, you, you got to stop there. Um, yeah, the, there's some camps are, I would say, I would not want to say prettier than others. Uh, trail camps are trail camps. It's, it's one thing. Staff camps yeah. are great. I have not ever been to a camp in Philmont that's terrible. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, every camp's got its pluses and minuses. Poneal's a great camp. But remember, Poneal is a busy camp. Yeah. Uh, you, may have you, may ha you may have 15 crews in that camp. That's a lot of people. You know, what they don't put in the itinerary book, at least that I've found, is some of the staff camps have like a, uh, a campfire program, sort of, where they have very, uh, very good musicians there that do oh, yeah. the show for you. And uh, well, that would be great yeah. if that was in the, the guidebook a little bit more. 
I th yeah, I think it is on some of them. And somewhere they're, they're, they do list a camp that has campfires. I'll find it and we'll have it posted on the Facebook page. Awesome. There, it, it, it's out there somewhere. I remember seeing it somewhere. I can't remember where. Um, yeah, well, may, maybe someone in the uh, will will tell us in the chat where it is as well. So th this is an interactive program, folks, and I appreciate yep. everyone that has been participating thus far. Let me yeah. let me look back at our itinerary real quick. Uh, <laughs> our itinerary. Let me itinerary. say agenda <clears throat> and um, make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, Sal talked about, he showed the gateway a bit and then used that to get to that track selection tool. Uh, was there anything that you wanted to show? Like if we have a lead crew advisor here that has never been into the gateway, like how to actually enter their selections, is that something that's available or is it not available yet? Uh, it's available yet. Let me look. Uh, if I remember from the last time it's, Pretty user friendly. Uh, okay, yeah. Right now, let me go back to sharing my screen. I'll sh let me see if I can do it now. Share screen. Uh, Chrome tab. I think it's this one. Okay, let me go. Okay, there's my gateway. When you go down, uh, let me see if I can go back one. Let me go back one more. Okay, right here. Um, right here where it says the green button. Can you see? Um, yes. you see yeah. You see, okay. This is my gateway for my crew. If you notice, I'm 621S2, and this is my, tells where I'm counseled from and all the good stuff. If you want a sister crew, this purple says you click a sister crew. Uh, if you click a sister or lead advisors, the, your sister crew has to okay it also. So both people are on board with sister crew. Your itinerary selection, that's the green button that's going to be available when the gate when the computer system will let you put in your numbers right click it it just gives you that right there it tells you about when to give it the 14th through yeah. the 13th of february that's all it shows you right now it doesn't let you put your your numbers in on the 14th of january that screen will change and it will say what are your numbers you hit enter and it uh, last year or two years ago when they did it, you put your numbers in, it showed them to you again, then you confirmed them. So I presume it's going to go the same way that way also. So this screen will have one more screen to it when it, on January 14th for any lead advisors who want to know how that works. Hope that hope that's what you wanted me to show you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So for our agenda items, uh, the next thing I think we already covered was types of camps, staff, trail, dry, and layover. We already yeah. talked about all those. Um, yep. Let's see, we had track it, trekking in the uh, Val Vidal versus Chase versus Philmont proper. I mean, just the general idea that we have the Philmont property, <coughs> and then we have a lot of surrounding properties that aren't owned by Philmont that... Um, that the folks are kind enough to let us use, but some of the infrastructure is a little bit different back there. So is there anything you guys want to point out about some of those other areas? Yeah. yeah okay. uh, uh, go for it, Scott. Okay, well, yes. So uh, one thing we didn't talk about at Philmont proper is all your camp sites are established. You've got a ring and a bear, uh, bear line and a sump at all your campsites and you have established trails. You have a red roof in, uh, you are in the back country, but uh, you got a little uh, guardrails, I call them. But when you go out into, say, the Valle Vidal, there are no established trails. There are no established camp sites. Uh, you are really using your map and compass skills to schwack from one point from a, in a meadow to, to the, your destination. And you are camping uh, using leave no trace principles. Uh, it, it's a very different experience. Uh, I loved it. It may not be for everybody. So when you're choosing your uh, trek selection, you might want to keep in mind that you're going to even go even more rustic if you go off off property. Sal, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, that's, that's Chase exact, Ranch. Ex yeah. Yeah, there's Chase Ranch uh, to the, if you look at the film, it's over to the right hand side. You've got the Ville Valdal. You have um, area up 
by where they call rich cabins. And then South you have, um, two other landowners. They let us use, they let Philmont use the land. Um, again, there's staff camps there, but a lot of them don't have trails. I know like it, like Scott said in the Ville at all, there is no trails. So you really need some, I would say, make sure you have your compass skills, um, yeah. intact. You'll need, you'll need them. Um, but on film up proper, most of the time you're going to be on a regular established trail. And, and um, practice those cat hole digging uh, skills as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hey, yeah. Um, Jeff. Yes. We had a we had a question about um, where you can see which camps have campfire. I mean, camp staff camps have campfires. Yes. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. I found it. Okay. That, for the record, that was my question. So. Oh, that was your question? Okay, <laughs> somebody's question. Uh, okay. In, if you go to Philmont um, on the page about, um, you'll see the guidebook for adventure. Sure. Every, you can see this online now. Everybody's, every lead advisor will get one of these for everybody mailed to them probably in the month of March. Make sure everybody has it. Make sure everybody reads it. Inside this book, um, I can't remember what page it is now. There is, um, I'm looking at last year's and trying to see if it's on the same page. They do list the camps. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Let's try. Let's look at page 55 real quick. I'm going to go real fast at page 55. Uh, but when you guys get these books in, the guidebook for adventure, make sure. Okay, there you go. Okay, here is every camp, and it tells you what that camping activity is. Like if you see Metcalf Station, Jeff, can you see Metcalf Station? Yes. Okay, right. Metcalf it's, Station. It's small, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Metcalf Station, it says railroading, blacksmithing, hand car, telegraph, campfire. That means that's, that's Metcalf does have a campfire program. <laughs> um, Next they have one a down train to, station at Metcalf now too. I understand. Yes, they do. Nice yellow train station. Um, but when when you see, you can look at the guidebook for adventure now online. But you will get a copy of it in the mail in the next month or two. So it, it's out there. Just have to find it. Okay, I'm stop sharing. <laughs> okay. Okay. All so right. What? So let me go back to the itinerary or the agenda. I keep wanting to call it itinerary. I have That's itinerary good. on the brain here. Uh, let's see. We talked about understanding mileage in the trek book, um, which I think we've already covered that uh, activities versus mileage. So, and and this is something that I mentioned early with uh, you know, as a youth. I I went. I was seventeen. I was in great shape. I wanted to, to impress everyone in the world with how many miles we did. That's all I cared about. Uh, looking back at it, I don't remember the miles. I remember the activities. So, um, again, I think that that's just a great way to kind of set the stage with the scouts when they're looking for what they want to do. Most people are probably going to be happier and remember um, – no. things uh yeah that, that's what you're saying no to i think right, right? <laughs> um most, most people are going to remember those activities more than miles so i would certainly encourage them to uh pick a mileage that looks like there's nothing that that's going to make them miserable and then base everything on activities so if if to get the activities they want there are going to be some days that they think there are people on the crew that aren't going to be able to hack there is no use having an activity that everyone is dying to do, and then you miss it because someone can't hike fast enough. You've set that person up to be miserable and to make the crew miserable. Don't do it. You know, um, try to try to stick within the capabilities of your crew. I think that's where, as crew advisors, we have some sway to to take the opinions of what activities the scouts want to do and weigh it against the reality of you know who's going and what can they handle. And and try to balance it. Yep. Uh, that uh, activities are available to those who show up on time. If your crew's slow, they won't be able to take advantage of all the act activities. That's a true story. That's a true. That's true. And and a caveat to that one is sometimes you do pass through <clears throat> camps that have program or activities that you're not scheduled to do, 
And if you're hiking fast and early enough in the day and they have an open slot, yep. uh, sometimes they can fit you in and you can do an extra program. Sounds right. Early, not fast. That's what you want to do. Yep. Yeah. You yep. want to be early. It's not, it's not the speed. It's, it's early. Um, yep. If you get there, I mean, it's happened to me at least once that we got there. We were passing through a staff camp. The activity, the, the program was not on our itinerary, but we asked them to go, we have an extra, we can fit you yep. guys in if you go and hang out for 30 minutes. So we hung out for an extra 30 minutes and got to do something extra. So um, just remember that. Uh, Terry says the showers, the showers do close early. So that's something you want to look into. Showers usually showers close. Showers still not? Yeah. My wife makes me take one. That's um, another that's another topic uh, that we can talk about in another chat if anyone wants to hear that, not just showers. Uh, but I will say, if that's important to you, the ability to bathe every now and then, don't just look. If you remember in the uh, itinerary guide, there was a, um, what was it, a little S beside the yes. camp name that indicated it had a shower. You don't have to be staying there to use that shower. I remember uh, on our Miranda up over Baldy down through French Henry, we resupplied at Baldy Town and uh, we actually got there right as the showers were closing and persuaded them. They close at a certain time. What they told us is that they close the showers at a certain time for human scent mitigation. The soaps and things might attract wildlife later. I don't know if I really believe it, but we convinced them that, well, okay, fine. We just won't use soap. We'll be good. And they didn't want to say no, I guess. And uh, okay, I guess if you don't use soap. So, so it worked out, but, but understand you don't have to be staying there to be able to, to use the shower. Correct. I don't think a scout is going to put that down as one of their uh, top priorities is shower, but who knows? Correct. Well, we'll put it down down as a top priority for me (laughs) to shower uh, because uh, you know, I got old man stench and uh, they, they, you know, it, it's good for me to shower every couple of days. Mm. I'm glad you're in a different time zone there, Jeff. Yeah. That's it. Yep. yep. So uh, and, uh, Andy right, wants I'm to know if make, you go for it. I'm going to make a uh, last call for um, last call for questions, comments, anything like that. Uh, I think we have made it through our agenda. And uh, I want to be sure if anyone has anything, just, just burning uh, questions that we're able to address those. So speak now or you have to wait till next time. Should we do it again? Baldy Town, close for maintenance. You know, Baldy Town's where we had a little bit of a shower denial thing going on. I'm starting to suspect there may be a management issue there. The mayor seemed a little shady to me, to be honest with you. I'm I'm looking at some of the questions. There was a question about uh, how do you pick camps? I think we talked about it. We Um, did. Oh, yeah, Joseph Marsh. uh, Echoing the question, how would a newbie pick your camps to stay in? You, it's more of picking the program, Joseph, as opposed to picking the camp. Yep. Um, so that's what you have to look into. You just have to. So uh, Jim O'Shea has a tenting, has fathers wanting to tent with their sons against youth protection. Right. If I remember right, that is true. You can't, you can't, youth can't sleep with adults anymore, even though they're sons, if I remember right, on youth protection, but that's not what we're talking about today. But I'd have to, I would have, I would say, if I remember right, that would be a no. You, you, you are correct. And all over the Welcome Center when we were there in 2019, there were signs to that effect uh, reinforcing that. <clears throat> oh, Ryan Kane says, are there any iconic camps you mentioned, Poneal? <laughs> I mean, you know, I I mentioned Poneal. I don't actually love Poneal. It's just one of the iconic camps. Yeah, everyone goes through. If you're going to be in the North Country, you're going to go through Poneal. Correct. Miranda, yeah, maybe Miranda. Yeah, Miranda Metcalf is one of my favorites. I like Dan Beard. Um, North Country, South Country, Yuraka Mesa is always cool. Um, Fun to say too. Yeah, it's fun to say. Carson Meadows. Fish camp is always good. Uh, Apache Springs is awesome. Um, 
Miners Park is great. I could go on. Somebody, one of my scouts one time went through and checked off all the camp I've been to. It was at 75%. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so to me, to answer that question of iconic camps, to me, it comes down to two things. Is there an insane view that you're not going to find anywhere else? Is the aesthetic really cool like Miranda? Oh, or does it, it have program that it, you just have to go to? But, Again, Miranda's pretty good for that too. So, yeah. yeah. Or do they Jeremy, have a cool patch for the camp? That's yeah. That's Jeremy great. wanted to know is there a best sunrise or sunset or moonrise for camps? Um, Yuraka Mesa in the South Country has a sunrise that's awesome. Um, if you do South Country again, Tooth Ridge is awesome for the sun, sunrise. Phillips is great for watching the sunset. Um, so, oh, you know one that, that you don't hear about that uh, our ranger wandered off. I, I think he was going to pee. And when he came back, he's like, whoa, guys, stop what you're doing. Come with me. And we went and uh, we were at, uh, what was it, Toothache Springs? Does that sound right? I think so. Yeah. And it was our first night. So we still had him. And uh, there it was, uh, we were on, we were like on the top of a mesa. So when we walked out to the edge of camp, it was one of those don't sleepwalk or you will fall off. But we went and sat up on the edge of this overlooking the valley that we had just hiked in from. It was amazing. So there are some things like that, that if you explore a little bit, if you just get to your campsite and sit, you know, we, we would have completely missed that. And it was amazing. So don't be afraid yeah, to look yeah, around. Yeah. Hey, El, hey Jeff. El, to add to add to that, Elkhorn has got an awesome vista. When you when you hike to it and you go you go po past this pile of rocks. Oh, it's a pile of rocks. But when you go back there to watch the sunset, it's sun the sun sets right over Baldy from there. And if the storms are coming in, you can see the storms rolling off of Baldy, and they'll never hit you because every time they hit you, you're they stop. But that's an awesome spot to to. Uh, view the sunset is from the uh, Elkhorn Creek. So hopefully, uh, Jeremy, that answered your questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to share something here. Um, and, and this is the self-promotion portion of the program here. So Go for uh, it. this is being hosted on the, this live stream is being hosted on the gearreport.com uh, YouTube channel, and it will be available there in replay. So I've seen a couple questions about, you know, hey, I missed part of this. Well, can I watch it in replay? Uh, yes, it is being recorded. It usually, when we do these live streams, it takes about 24 hours sometimes for YouTube to process it and make it available. The same link that you're using to watch it now, you can go back and watch it later. Or uh, in the next few days, I will take, uh, I, there's a Filmont section on gear report so if you hit the main website go under camping and down to philmont that'll take you to this page that look at that we have articles by Ooh. scott o'mary right here three four of them in a row and then uh, some other things a tour of the museum at the video tour some uh philmont base camp video tours uh budget backpacking gear a tour of the tooth of time the, the, what we mentioned earlier, an interview with uh, Luke, who was running the Winter Adventure Program, some very comprehensive gear review videos for different options for gear on the trail. All of those things are here on Gear Report. There will be a new article added probably within a few days that has kind of a summary of some of the highlights in text form, as well as an embedded video of this recording. So... Okay. Awesome. Hey, Jeff. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to share one more time. I remembered another website and it just came to me. <laughs> okay. Daring um, theory. That's what I keep hearing. It's it. It's called Phil search. It's another Philmont person making a awesome website. Um, pretty cool. When you go to it, it has the itineraries. The cool thing about it. Can you see it? Uh, yeah. Okay. But when you go to camps, you can oh, excuse me when you go to photos you can go to some of the photos aren't are older than others but you can look at staff cabins campsites it has pictures of a lot of camps on it and when you yeah. go to it when you go to itineraries um you can do let's i'm gonna remember how to do it now 
by 10 degrees at a glance. Okay, it shows you what each itinerary is. And there was a way to do a virtual tour. There it is. I think that's it. Okay, let's see if this works today. Uh, let's do 17. And it shows you kind of what you're going to do every day. There's base camp, day one, just some pictures of base camp. And in, it, you can see every day there's camp. Somebody's gave up pictures for every day on this camp. So day four, 17, you're going to be at Baldy Town. There's a picture of Baldy Town. So this is a really good website to look at pictures, to look at what the camps could look like. Some of these pictures are old, so you have to take that into consideration also. But that's a cool, that's another cool website. It's called uh, philsearch.org. Yep, I shared the URL in the in the chat. So, man, I, you know, the idea was we were going to come on here and share some information to help educate some folks out there. I feel like I have probably learned uh, as much as anyone else out there watching. So, uh, Sal, awesome idea. Scott, thank you for coming on board to participate and also for what you contribute. Uh, both of you guys contribute so much in the Facebook group and uh, are a huge asset to the to the folks that are uh, going to Philmont as participants, especially to, to people who are taking on that leadership role as a crew advisor. Because um, I got to tell you, it's a lot of work. And, uh, you know, everyone who is willing to take that on, uh, thank you. It, it makes no, a difference. No these, tricks couldn't go, these tricks couldn't happen without adults stepping up to uh, kind of stand in the background and just watch and make sure everything is safe <laughs> and try That's to keep true. up and get um, yourself in shape. Yes. Get yourself. Yeah. Start. I had, I had a scout last week. He's going with it. He goes, when should I start working out? I said, you should have been already working out. <laughs> <laughs> it's June. It's December. Oh, yes. I mean, December. I said, you should have been working out three months ago, but, um, but again, thanks for for doing this. Um, it was great for you to host it, the IT wise, because that's way beyond my scope. Um, but just to everybody out there, if you have any questions, post them on the Facebook group. Trust me, you'll get a bunch of answers. Um, there's no, as they say, there is no stupid question. You may get some stupid answers, but um, there is questions. Um, Teresa had a quick question. Uh, interested in cooking with special dietary needs. Um, Teresa, it does, if you go to the Philmont website and type in food or allergies, they have a whole section on what to do with that. So we won't go into that, but there is a whole section on what to do and how to do it. Um, I've seen it done before and it works. I've never used it, but I, how it works in Philmont is, uh, Philmont is a big machine that runs effortlessly. <laughs> It runs good. So, but was, thank you guys for hosting. It was great. Absolutely. Thanks for everybody who participated. If I, can, if, I, if I can ask the people who are still here, if you haven't done the little thumbs up on the video, please do that. It'll help. It does a few things. All right. I, I'll admit I'm being selfish. I run Gear Report. It'll help Gear Report a little bit. But more importantly, it feeds the YouTube ag algorithm and makes this video show up in the uh, suggestive videos for other people who may have an interest who may benefit from this information. So if you don't mind doing that, if this is interesting to you and you might want to give a, a subscribe uh, to, to gear report, you want to subscribe to that channel. I would certainly appreciate that. Um, and, and we do our best. We have a very large team of uh, geez, 55 writers covering a whole wide variety of different topics. So uh, that's enough self-promotion for me though. Um, and, and man, the thanks keep coming in. I keep thinking, okay, it's time to hit the end, end broadcast button and people keep saying thank you. So, so again, yeah. Sal and Scott, uh, you, you seen the long string of thank yous. So this was clearly a good idea. Thanks both of you for being available to do this. No problem. And again, um, if you want to, like I said, post your questions on the Facebook page, um, I don't mind, Jeff, if you want to put my email address out there, they can email me and I can share them that way. If they have a personal question about something, that I'll well, be I've glad already to ask shared questions. all your personal information all over the internet, Sal. So you don't have to worry about that. No problem. <laughs> yeah. No problem. No problem. Oh, let's see. So, Man, more, more, more than 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 
What's that? Someone needs the Facebook group link. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I posted that up uh, a little, uh, where is it? There. Yep. And and it's in the chat. And uh, so you can go down and find that there. Let's see. First dumb question. I arrived. At, oh, and that's what you were talking about. So, yeah. I clicked oh, I just, off of it to go give it. It's not very oh. helpful with that really long name. But if you go in the search area of Facebook and type Philmont Trek Talk, and then it's um, Philmont Trek Talk Prep News Info. Uh, I just I'm gonna paste I, that in here as well. Oh, no. Wrong thing. All right, I'm just going to hit enter here. I think I got an extra word on there, but uh, yeah, Philmont Trek Talk News Info, and that pub at the end was a fragment that I tried to delete and I messed up. So sorry about that. Oh, I think they could find it. Yep. Um, I, I just got an email from one of my other senior adults, leads, and he says, Great job. You, if they, it was an awesome report. So. Yeah, we'll so in, in that Facebook group, please list if there are any other topics that you'd like to have a discussion like this online, please post them there and uh, we will see if we can find the appropriate resources willing to hop on a live discussion. If you have experience and, uh, you know, you have a face for the camera and you want to hop on, you know, like this. Yeah, that's a requirement, is it? This is my homeless. How did I uh, get on here then? Here. Yeah. So if uh, if you, if you want to come on and be a part of the next discussion, let us know. Uh, we don't actually have anything planned moving forward, but this has gone well enough. If if people find it valuable, um, we'll we'll see if we can get the right people together to to discuss whatever's important to you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. With a big thank you to everyone who participated in a very lively chat, everyone who contributed along the way. And, uh, you know, until next time, we'll see you on the trail. <laughs>